Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Prime Talk. My name is Lisa Kinski. I'm your host for today, joined by my guest, Matt Anderson. Matt, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Um, Thank you so much. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on with me, Matt. So everyone, Matt is the Chief Strategy Officer at Optimizen, which is a UK-based team providing data-led insights across the digital shelf covering the Amazon marketplace optimization. So Matt, will talk about Optimizen a little bit later in the episode, but right now we would like to get to know you and your journey to Optimizen and through this wonderful wild ecosystem of Amazon. So tell us about yourself. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks for thanks for the intro. Um, well, it, it's interesting, isn't it? The world of world of Amazon and e-commerce it, it attracts people from all walks of life, and I guess I, I'm not atypical. But um, I, I my my background I've been in digital marketing for about 20 years. Um, I, I originally started in in the field of like um, retail and PR marketing. Uh, okay. was with my background uh, and I, I were doing things like store launches for Starbucks here in the UK and, and uh, B&Q which is a bit like Home Depot for, or Depot depending on where you are uh, and um, yeah just that was, was re- I've always been really interested in what makes consumers find love and buy products from the marketing perspective, perspective and that's what sort of drew me into sort of digital marketing um, international social media campaigns for, for the likes of North Face and, and um, Brabantia, which is a Dutch brand over here in, in, in Europe and um, sold in the States as well. Um, and that sort of took me into areas where I was always constantly learning, being a marketeer, first and foremost, is what makes marketing successful, what makes people buy. And that journey took me into the world of e-commerce because of the world of the data that you could get through uh, DTC sites through Google, but also then um, took me into Amazon, which is like is that like opening Aladdin's cave of data about consumers, um, which is brilliant because f- finally I could be applying a lot of the performance marketing techniques that I'd learned through the years uh, on Amazon, but uh, immediately see the results and you know things like title changes or or images or is it a red one or a blue one? What what, what will make consumers buy? You know. Uh, don't want to go all matrix with you, Mr. Anderson, but yeah, is it a red pill or blue pill consumer? And then be able to have the data to show you that. But right. you know, um, so that's what got me. That's what sort of six, you know, Amazon's a vortex, isn't it? It sucks us all in eventually. So that's what that's what drew me into Amazon um, with a brand called um, Brabantia. Uh, uh, they they said, look, hey, Matt, you and your team, uh, Montage Communications, my first um, uh, agency. Uh, and, and saying like, okay, look, can you optimize all these SKUs? We've got twelve hundred SKUs on on Amazon in the UK. We'd, we'd, we're too busy. Can you just guys just deal with it and see how you get on? And it was a really good opportunity, and we did really really well on optimizing the content for consumer journeys based on what people were searching from like the SEO principles, and that worked really well. And then AMS pay per click was rolled out on Amazon back then. Um, Okay, guys, can you deal with that? And um, you know, we 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 made a quarter of a million pounds worth of sterling sales uh, in that first campaign, and we just thought, actually, well, this there's something really here that's really powerful, and um, and grew the brand. So we rolled it out all over the UK, EU, and USA. Um, you know, they're they're doing tens of millions of euros a, a year on Amazon uh, as a brand. And, and that's that's been a success. They've, they've got their own Amazon director, to give you an idea of how focused now they are. Oh, on Amazon, wow. Which not many organizations do, which I think is really cool. What um, what year was this that they had really started and you had began helping them to optimize listings? Uh, so basically, uh, with 14 years, oh, yeah, well, it's about uh, 2010, 2011. 2010. Okay, so yeah, kind of so before away, away, away back when. Um, yeah, but, um, in, yeah, in the before in times. <laughs> Four times. I remember when they were, you know, I feel like I feel, I feel like I'm showing my age, kids. Now sit around and I'll tell you when when Amazon used to charge everyone fifteen hundred pounds or fifteen hundred dollars per A plus content unit. You know, sort of <laughs> back in those days. Um, but yeah, so that 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 was great. Um, we got some real momentum. 
And uh, I've always been really interested in products and something I didn't really mention is just like prior to getting into agency land, I was, I was with Dyson, the vacuum cleaner uh, company back we then. Dyson here. And, Big. Uh, yeah. And um, that was, that was an amazing company. Got really focused on products, really understand about marketing. Re guys, if you want to, if you want a case study about how to manage your distribution channel and deal with their party sellers, look at Dyson. You know, yes, if you really want to protect your brand and be able to manage your price, you know, third parties, third party sellers and distributors can really mess it all up. Anyway, that's that's a side note, but that's something that he was very, very strong on, very focused on his product, very proud of his product and focused on that. And that's what sort of took my approach into Amazon as well, really, about being able to manage the channel and, and be think Amazon first rather than bricks and mortar first, actually, when you're dealing with marketplace. So that that started really to sort of snowball with certain brands like um, cool brands like Sphero, do the BB-8 droids um, uh, for like sort of app-enabled toys worldwide. We did Soak, we did you know numerous brands, and that was sort of okay. That was like a not a, Amazon was always a side hustle for most people, but for my agency at the time it was. But there was a side hustle that was getting quite big and like lots of inquiries on the back of it because we started to optimize our website. So I set up Marketplace AMP about five years ago alongside that. And I was sort of like dual riding two agencies and then AMP was getting bigger and bigger. And I was like, okay, well, let's just, you know, uh, uh, sell off montage and then go to a, a, a AMP and then um, and focus on that. And that's where I, 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 I took that for five years. So working with like Ferrero, wreck -It, who do uh, brands like, Durex and Dettol and you know big big consumer brands over this this side of the pond and and, and in the US um, and uh, that that was sort of built from there and then last year I was uh, my company was acquired by Optimize on so um so that's where I built up and up and up from there really understanding the full ecosystem vendor seller DSP Amazon advertising um, before we were acquired, AMP won an Amazon Advertising Award as well, which we were really, we were really proud of, um, which not many smaller agencies do. It's usually the big, you know, the big advertising groups hoover up all the awards, don't they? Um, so that was cool. And, um, yeah, I've always been really sort of, uh, as an individual from way back when in, in the world of digital, I was collaborating with lots of uh, agency peers and uh wonderful partners like Gatida, which is partner of ours today, uh, you know, but to sort of learn. And I, even though I do joke to some of the younger members of the team, like I am a bit of one of the elder statesmen, but I'm not that old really, I'm, you know, um, but the big five O is, is somewhere on the horizon anyway, <laughs> but every day is day one for me. And I've always been really curious about, and always wanted to learn off everybody in the team or in, in the industry. And that's something that I've always, fostered so um as an aside i set up um in digital east anglia here in the uk which is like i'm based near cambridge uk by the way um for the, for the, for the listeners uh, and that was a really good thing because I, i'd moved from bristol the other side of the country and, and to set up this network about to sort of meet like-minded digital people uh, and that was really really cool so one of the guys that i met joe vertigan which i'll shout out to him he's um he was my non-exec director at AMP um and you know it's, it's, it's a mind the size of a planet and he was a really really good guy so he just done lots of digital campaigns including like the digital campaign for here in the uk uh, world cup bid for the football uh, for the wow. soccer as well um and yeah he, he's he taught me a lot so just yeah be, be open mind and be able to network and be able to collaborate it's, it's been been a constant throughout my uh career really um as an individual so hopefully it gives you a little bit of flavor for like my my business path anyway and, and where i'm coming from yeah certainly I'm always interested in why people find love and buy products That's and cool. has that been an an interest of yours even as early as university like what were you thinking you would do as a young adult in, in your adulthood for your professional career um a young adult, I uh, I think my first job I ever wanted to be was an ice cream salesman. <laughs> I mean, there's no better gig, is there? <laughs> when you're a kid, I'm just like, okay, what do I really want to be? What will make me happy? And uh, that's what, the, but that was that. Um, but no, I joke you aside, um, 
I, I wanted to go into um, uh, production and manufacturing, um, but in here in the UK, that's been just not been very well supported. But you know, so I uh, the, the the jobs were very few when I came out of university, and I ended up going into um, uh, logistics, PO Trans European, okay, um, and um, and uh, uh, it was um, yeah, basically. Uh, um, an area that I was really, really, really sort of interested in from um, from a language point of view because I lived in Germany while I was at university for a year, and also um, just how business worked. Lots of different types of businesses work through manufacturing and, and the like, um, and um, that was quite interesting. But I mean, I think I just fell into that on the back of my production knowledge about how how things are made. Sure. Uh, and, that, and then I sort of that took me into the, into Dyson as like okay, how 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 are products are made really um, and uh, but uh, on the back of like PO that I've I was in like sales and um, sales and marketing support and that's how I sort of got into marketing from there really so it's never a linear path is it okay I'm going to be a, uh, I'm going to work in Amazon and uh, Dad and then I don't leave it after you uni leave at university but. Um, yeah, I think there's constants I've been always interested in is good products and what makes people find love and buy products as well. And that's that's just been a real interest of mine. Yeah, for sure. Are you bilingual at all? You said you lived in Germany for a year. Do you speak yeah, German? Yeah, you can speak a Deutsch, yeah. <laughs> all right, great. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of français. Uh, I, speak, I speak German, but a little bit of French and I, I, I've dabbled, I dabbled with Italian. That's my late, latest one. And, and, and I, I, I make a fool of myself with Spanish, but you know, but it's, but yeah, I, I like mean, I, I do like that. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I am European, I think, and, and, and which is unusual. A lot of English people probably don't think that right now, which is sad. But you know, it's, but yeah, it's uh, that's that's my outlook on life. I think uh, Spanish and Italian are actually pretty similarly structured. There's a lot that yes. is pretty one to one. So once you've got one, I think the other one's pretty pretty easy to pick up, but that's, that's impressive. And so I know at some point in time, you decided to start selling yourself on Amazon. What was that first foray to the marketplace as a seller? Like what was your first product? If you want to share and kind of what was the deciding factor to be a brand owner? Oh, um, but just, just, just to say where full disclosure, I'm not actually sold my own products for Amazon. I sold numerous brands through, through, for Amazon on, on seller. Um, definitely an aspiration of mine uh, uh that's probably the next that's the next next journey probably um but um yeah i think um from selling i've sold through the seller platform numerous products and helped scale brands like um swell uk here in the uk which is like pond and aquatics business which has grown enormously um I, I've sold a, a work, worked with um, pet drugs online, um, which they do lots of dogs supplements and and uh, drops and eye drops and things like that. Uh, you know that that's you know a, a huge business now, um, hundreds of thousands a week in turnover. Um, and you know there's um, and I, I just really get a kick out of scaling brands. And making them really 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 big <laughs> um so that's what i that's what i, li I like to do um yeah um, i've worked on lint bells here in the uk it's like what's one of the top selling products in, in the pet category um and um in ferrero i work with eat natural um so they did like a, a, a health bar brand um and then du durex and and it, it goes on and on really but i do i do like working with big consumer brands as well where my experience is, where I'm not down to the nuts and bolts of selling personally myself. I've always had like team members dealing with some of the more technical aspects. I like to think that I'm, I'm very hands-on when it comes to be able to pick up an account and absolutely to go from A to B all the way through it. I'm not one of these marketeers that just focuses just on the advertising. You know, the whole Amazon flywheel is 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 a based around availability, assortment, you know, and, and pricing and all those good things as well as traffic. So um, I think a lot of people do get caught up on ACOS and TACOS and all those yeah. good things. Yeah. <laughs> and so what do you enjoy to do in your spare time then when you are not helping to optimize various brands? Um, I'm 
yeah, I've got a few quirky, quirky hobbies. I think when uh, away from the business and from being a business owner, I think. Um, uh, well, I, I'll talk about mindfulness because I think it's something we're going to come on about how, how we deal with stress. Really, I do. I do a lot of that. Um, I'll talk more more in depth about my thoughts about that. Um, but um, I I also DJ. I do, I'm a house DJ. I do like uh, old school soulful house big beats funk and I do like some deep house as well um so that's what I do I I, I have aspirations to DJ in clubs in Ibiza I have I've only got as close as DJing in, in villas in Ibiza but uh, <laughs> but you know uh it's one of those things that I've, I've been I get invited to friends parties and um and I, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll DJ for them but I, I really that's one sort of things that I would like to do uh and a bit more but you know it's been super busy you know it takes a lot of your time and i've got yeah. ki- i had kids as well so you can't be out every night djing so you know i i'm a, I'm a frustrated bedroom dj a lot of the time um <laughs> that's part of me um and I, I also do i do mixed martial arts oh i've been doing that for a while um so yes yeah, a bit of like it's a mixture of nin- no, ninjutsu and karate and um uh, and yeah, body combat, which is basically just self defense, which is taught to like the armed forces and things. So, not Krav Maga, but it's similar to that, basically. Sure. Which is, um, again, that, you know, people are like, well, what, why are you doing that for? I mean, my, I'm, I'm basically a man of peace and I don't believe in violence at all. I have to, I, you know, let's get that out there for, for, for all the kids. I think most people that get in, involved in those types of things, it's all about discipline of, of, of of your mind and how you conduct yourself because i played rugby when i was younger and it's a similar sort of ethos about yes on the face of it those sort of things can be incredibly violent but the whole discipline and ethos behind them of being you know a gentleman and being respectful to authority and all those sort of things is really important so i think that's um that that's an interesting you know it's that they, it's that mindset i think it's more, more than anything it's more of a mind uh, a thing of being able to be confident when you walk down the street, not looking for a fight, but being confident that if they, you know, not being afraid uh, is basically the best way to describe, describe it and just being, go along, go, go peacefully along your way. That, that's been my, my mindset with it all, really. Um, so that, that was good. I've been doing that for the best part of a decade now. Um, but um, that, that's, 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 that's good stuff. Um, and yeah, what else? Um, just, Love rugby, love gardening. I've probably seen some of the plants here as well. You know, that's uh, uh don't know whether it's because I'm getting older or whether it's just a, like like uh, that's more of like the mindful thing as well, just getting away from the screen. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's gives you an overview of me, really. <laughs> Yeah, that's exceptional. I love it. Well, before we get into the questions of entrepreneurship, which you alluded to earlier, tell us a little bit more about Optimize and specifically who you're helping, how you're helping the marketplaces that you assist with, and um, then we can talk about how folks can get in touch with you and your team. Yeah, so um, yeah, so um, Optimize, um, we're based over here in the UK. Uh, it's uh, 54 in the team in total. Um we are a full service marketplace agency, predominantly on Amazon, uh, but we also um, optimize for uh, eBay, B&Q and Tesco's marketplaces over in the UK. We do some Walmart as well. Um, and uh, we provide uh, advertising content and uh, optimization. We have our own uh, data team that includes the software Nozzle AI, uh, which is really cool. So we can look at um, lifetime value um, and really about our approach is looking at, we have something called the opti profit model where we can be able to provide insights to to tell clients about how consumers are fine loving and buying their products, but which ones are the most profitable to list rather than listing everything. What, what should we be focusing our budget, our time and effort and our content on, uh, as well as looking at acquiring um, which customers are gonna be acquired rather uh, for, to drive lifetime value so who's coming back and buying over and over and over again why are they what products are they buying next and being able to buy that and then looking at brand and customer experience really to drive a conversion and, and keep engaging those customers and, and bringing them back um through remarketing through dsp or sponsored display or whatever it may be and then incrementally what's the next move to keep on growing those sales rather than cannibalizing them or causing issues so 
if I go to Walmart, I'm only going to move all my Amazon customers to Walmart sort of question. We can answer with overlap analysis as well. So that's very much what we were about. We worked with brands like Mars, Mars uh, Pet Care. We worked uh, with Reckitt, uh, Greenworks. Um, yeah, some big, some big, some big brands um, basically. So we typically are, are our ideal customer will be over 25 million turnover brands, so you know, a bit larger enterprise customers and large sellers as well. So you know, we, we do work with a lot of the super sellers. You know, the seven and eight fig uh, guys um, would be really you know some of the background I have worked with um, through lots of Titan Network or whatever. Um, so that that's a bit of our a bit of our background. Um, we cover predominantly the UK EU. We do have some clients over in the States, um, but, you know, if you're looking to come over to the EU as a US customer and you want someone to understand how all the EU works, um, I speak some languages. I've advised on the UK trade investment to get shipments into the UK, and I've got a logistics background as well, working with Transiopit. So it's funny how all these things all drop drop together. So um, that's what's worked where I fit. Where I fit. Well, that is exceptional. You answered all of my follow-up questions. Uh, the yes. last thing to do now <laughs> is just to let folks know where they can learn more, which of course is at the Optimizing website, optimizing.co.uk. Seems like unfortunately we've lost Matt's video stream. Let's see if we can get him back. Um, but for the audio listeners, that website is optimizon.co.uk. And if you have questions for Matt or for anyone on his team, you can reach out at hello at optimizing.co.uk. So Matt, welcome back. Uh, so we are going to transition into the second half of the episode, which is surrounded on our seven questions about entrepreneurship. And the first question, which you had started to talk about earlier, is how do you manage stress as an entrepreneur? Uh, stress. So yeah, I'm I'm a big believer of, of mindfulness, um, meditation, uh, taking time out, um, not in a lazy kind of way, but you know, actually just being able to pause. Um, I think it's far too much in the world of, of business and entrepreneurship where people have said, oh, "I've got to go, I've got to go, keep on going, flat out for sixteen hours." And we can all do that. I can do that. I certainly did when I was younger, when um, in corporate life, and um, but you can only do that over short sprints. You know, you've got that deadline, you've got that launch, you've got that whatever. That's that's fine, but you can't run effectively all the time like that. What I found when I was, you know, in my mid thirties, I was a little bit burnt out after corporate life, and I actually found that actually just taking time out to pause, meditate, reset, uh, it, it just like in the morning or part way through the day is really important, um, and you're so much better afterwards. So that really just that's how I manage stress, as well as you know some of the physical exercises that I, I do um as well um and it's just that that's the best way to manage it and i think also to be really um strong with yourself and focus around um uh you know around uh, things like um taking time out to focus on on certain activities rather than trying to answer the email slack teams and write that proposal at the same time you, you just you're just not affect that not effective at all like that really um so i think it's um something just to bear in mind so those two things mindfulness taking time out to focus less is more is, is the best way to deal with stress rather than i've got to do everything all at once and everything's a priority it just doesn't work yeah if everything's a priority nothing is a priority and i think we're always so scared to just turn off the notifications and eliminate those distractions to focus on that yeah. one thing because then you're not available to the team for the other thing. It's like, well, no, if if you need to get this done and you can hunker down and get it done, then you can be so much more effective later, you know, but if yes. that's yeah. that's a hard shift for people to make. I, I can I can understand that that is something you have to very actively practice. Yeah, and I think it's world of social media. I mean, I alluded previously about um, in the world of digital and doing a lot of social media campaigns um, you know, a decade ago. And I, I found that I was on my laptop and my phone like this all, all the time. And then you just pro I was programmed my brain to be constantly looking at the alert notifications. What's that influencer said about my client? Oh my God, what's this? Oh, this is blowing up. I need to go on this and da da da. da. And you, you know, just, your brain is just in a constant state of 
distraction, basically. Uh, and that's not that's not normal. That's not normal. It's not healthy, really. Uh, you know, it's not that's not a human being. He's not programmed for that. So I think I, I learned that um, having time out. You know, I was saying to my young kids, and uh, Lord knows it's really hard to get them off their phones. Parents, isn't it? But, but you know, I always keep saying, it's like uh, last night, I was I was going to bed myself and my daughter's like almost seventeen, so it's getting to the age where you really can't tell them to get off the cell phone. I'm just like, give your brain a rest. Yeah, read. Just leave your phone on the bed and go and have a bath or something. Just just to switch off. Really, I think it's really important. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. And and that's a perfect segue into our next question of what books do you recommend that every entrepreneur read? um books um well there's some well there's loads you know i think um you know rich dad poor dad is a good one um there's, there's one over here um which is grow your own digital agency by rob craven uh he's brilliant and he's got his mantras out of the book and he's got his i've got them on my desk still uh and it's just like really simple area it's a really simple book that you could probably you know read in one or two days um but it's really focused as, as like a, an entrepreneur about what you should be doing about your digital agency. You know, stop giving away endless freebies. We don't sell time. We sell our knowledge and all those sort of things. So it's those little really neat takeaways. It's very digestible ones. Um, so that that's one I I still have. I still carry around in my bag. So that, that's a really good one. Um, as uh, Patrick Lenicone, The Advantage. It's coffee stained. It's well thumbed, this one. <laughs> Um, and, you know, basically it's about um, why organisational health trumps everything else. By that, it means that as an organisation, you can be try to be smarter at your technology, uh, your marketing, whatever, which is great. There's only so much competitive advantage in that. It's how you get – most businesses are human businesses, aren't they? Well, still are, just for now until ai takes us all over and then that god knows what we'll be doing but um the point is is that if you can get an organization at from c-suite all the way down aligned and working on the same page and having a good level of um constructive tension between the teams the people going well i'm going to do this and you're having people challenging it going well that's great but have you thought about why or Z?" rather than going well that's rubbish i don't agree with it you know you're talking bs whatever um having a healthy level of tension in a business so we can all check and challenge each other but also communicate so aligned expectations really clear communication everyone on the same page less politics everyone's happy and it's, it's all about organizational health so i think that's really something that um you know any any business for any size can really sort of buy into so i think that's really you know, mo most people talk about lots of buzzwords and jargon and AI, and you've got to do this for your business and that this bit of tech for your business. But this really focuses on how do you get the people on the same page and and keep them all happy and pulling in the same direction. I think that's that's just a brilliant book. Um, um, so that's a good one. And then um, what I'm reading at the moment is um, Justin Roth is the the machine: how to design a sales process. Um, okay. And that's really interesting. So that's talking about, um, you know, we all have the traditional sales sort of funnel process, but it talks about consultative sales in the world of business and, and agencies are consultants. Um, mm -hmm. We don't just do stuff on Amazon. We, we're, it's a whole, you're consulting the whole business. You've got to get mm -hmm. your logistics, your sales, your marketing, your e-commerce and, 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 and everyone else on the same page, basically. Um, so if that's the case, then you have to be really good at consultative sales. The point is there that do you need your own dedicated sales team or do you need people in your team that can support the sales function and, and design that process to how to do it? So all the way up to the top of the funnel, doing things like we're doing now with how do your, how do your podcasts help your sales process and all the way down? It's, it's a really interesting one, which I had to be honest, I haven't finished quite as yet. But I, th I think I think he's on to something. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good book, basically. <laughs> so good. Um, so yeah. So when I find time to finish them, I am one of these people that you your thumb two thirds of the way out, and then you think, oh, another one. And depending on the challenges I have as a business owner and/or entrepreneur, I'll I will pick up books and 
read sections of them depending on what uh, you know sure. the problems that you have and then pick and put down it's a bit frustrate i'm a bit frustrated it's probably coming from the social media distraction bit, really. <laughs> probably <laughs> you know, but picking through your books really um I, I do recommend on that point it's like there's apps out there like headway which give you really good succinct overviews of lots and lots of books uh which um it's also something that i've i've sort of got into because it's good because you there's nothing worse when you have a client going, oh, yeah, I've read this book and it's really interesting. What the author said, and you, you're just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you have to think, oh, there's another book I have to go and read. Um, sure. So that's really good. So the head, Headway app is a tip for listeners to to take a look at. And they they, they succinctly do an overview of, of, of books as well. Okay, awesome. Another seamless segue into our next question of what tools are you currently using that you think have had a positive are. impact on your success? <laughs> You're just setting me up one by one. This is great. Yes, it's good. Um, head, uh, tools. Um, what do you mean for like Amazon or just like in life or just head- anything at all in life on Amazon? This can be okay. your Google Calendar. It can be if you have found an effective app that shuts the rest of your social media apps down after a certain amount of time, or it can be your alarm yeah. clock. I mean, anything. Yeah. So I mentioned, I mentioned headway. So that's a succinct overview of like really good books. Um, and you can filter it by what your interests are. So it's entrepreneurship, health and lifestyle, mindfulness, da, 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 all that. that's good. And another H is head, headspace for mindfulness, which I'm really, I'm, I'm sure lots of listeners are into that. And that that's really good. Or, um, uh, you know, there's lots of mind, there's lots of like mindfulness apps, but Headspace is something that I, I, I religiously use a lot because it sort of, it, it, it keeps me in my meditation uh, mindset, which is great. Um, it's very hard for those people into mindfulness, it's very hard to like self, definitely in the world today, is, is, is be able to meditate on your own and be happy with um, peace and quiet. But in a busy life, I find Headspace is really good. Um, you know, before you go to bed, they've got they've got some great sort of like a sleepscape stuff, and all that's 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 really good as well. So that, that that's that's a good one. Um, Notion um, for, for like you know sort of note taking etc. Um, is a really good one. Um, yeah, there's loads there's loads of loads of tools and apps out there. Isn't it? You can go go on and off. Sure, uh, sure. Flip flipboard, flipboard's another one. News aggregator. Yeah, flipboard is oh. a good yeah. Yeah. Yes. It is it is so hard to stay on top of everything nowadays. Yeah. Um what are some habits two to three that you think are important for every entrepreneur to adapt to be successful? And let's let maybe take uh mindfulness and like practicing meditation off the table. Let's think of two or three new ones. Okay. Well, um, Three points, I think it's like, I'm, I'm going to hijack it and say three values. Um, sure. Uh, is, is to, to be, you know, uh, number one is be curious. And I think I mentioned it earlier on in, in, in the episode is um, every day is day one, to use the Amazonian term. You know, be curious, keep learning, um, ask questions. Um, one of my colleagues, Dan Walsh, you know, He's missed a question, and um, uh, it, I, I'm the same. It's like, yeah, but how does that work? And why are you doing it that way? Or what? It's just not without being challenging. It's just really just to get underneath the skin of a subject or a brand. It's really something that you have to. Um, I, I find the most successful entrepreneurs, and I mentioned James Dyson. You know, he was really good when my first day one. He would he sat at the end of my desk. And he said, "Hey, do you fancy going building a vacuum cleaner with me?" And I'm like, "Yeah." let's go and do that so we, and he was like telling me all about how all the various, various parts worked and and he was prompting me to get more and more into the detail about the, the products really and I think that's something that stuck with me um transparency uh you know do what you say say what you mean be open book as much as you can be without giving away confidential information uh, within the world of business but I find that that is something that resonates it builds trust. Um, we say over here in England, as I have a saying, is like play, playing it with a straight bat. You know, uh, you know, so without without uh, being devious or anything like that. And I think that within the world of entrepreneurship, that 
helps build trust it helps build relationships it it it, it builds your reputation and and the world in the, in the world of entrepreneurship reputation as a new brand is absolutely everything so i think that's something that you know every entrepreneur can sort of stand by um and uh number three is when it comes to sort of leadership is being authentic um by that i mean is that uh you know in the world of instagram and on linkedin and all those places that we all hang out as entrepreneurs you go oh my god that person over there is driving a lamborghini and this person over there is in dubai and i'm I'm just failing and just uh but just being like authentic with your staff and people around you and going okay yeah today we've had this we've had this challenge but you know what i've got the solution guys and and we're going to do x y and z and -hmm. and because uh, being authentic about the business and going actually we have these challenges or uh we have these opportunities even as well it's not you know not just business isn't all all about the wins it's learning from the, the losses and uh you know how can you move forward from that because lord knows as a business person i've made tons of just tons and tons of mistakes but it's how you <laughs> learn from them and be just authentic about it so i think that's just yeah. as, as, a, as a learning really so curiosity transparency and authenticity you got it. That's me. <laughs> awesome. 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 Uh, yeah. Last last couple of questions for you here. What is one thing that you wish you knew about Amazon before you started selling brands? Um, wish I knew. I wish I knew how brand registry really works. So that'd be a good <laughs> okay. one. one that lets me know that, you know, this black box that just, you know, any, everyone in Amazon doesn't seem to know how it works either. But I really... Uh, or, or, I guess to answer your question is like previously to selling on is if I knew that brand registry was such a pain would I have got involved oh my god um, I call it the doom loop sometimes I and mean, anyone that's been involved with Amazon large agencies like ourselves we're an Amazon partner, partner agency we have access to people within Amazon and even still we get these problems as well so if anyone that can anyone that can write in email me and just to say okay this Matt, this is how it really works. And, and here's, here's some SOPs about brand registry that how it really works. That'd be great. You know, yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, what would be your number one piece of advice for entrepreneurs that are starting their Amazon journey today? Um, yeah, well, I would really think about um, two things. Um, looking for a gap in the, in the market. Um, so a gap analysis. Why? Why? Why and how consumers are finding your kind of products? Is it is are they searching for a product that isn't on Amazon as yet? Uh, by that I mean there's an opportunity there. There's there's you know, we call it gap analysis in the trade, but you know finding that niche where there isn't competition, where then you can actually drill drill down into it and go okay from sourcing, you know what's your cost price? Have I got enough margin there to support an Amazon brand? And I would say, like, the one piece of advice is make mistakes on paper first before you go charge again and believing the evangelical the evangelical people on YouTube going, hey, guys, side hustle, I'm doing $10,000 a month or whatever, all that sort of thing. So that, that's great, but if you're losing $5,000 a month, then that's not so great. So you need to right. be making sure that, you know, make mistakes on paper, find that niche, Um and then, you know, when you start to really think about your product is do as much research as you can do with actually human beings rather than Jungle Scout and Helium 10, which are great tools, by the way. But, you know, you've got to under- understand your consumer first. Mm-hmm. So what product really? So you've got two options with when you're making a product. It's make a, make a product that your consumers really, really want or like iPads, make a product that your consumers don't want, but they'll really, really want. So you've mm-hmm. got those two options. So really, if you if you <laughs> if you can have those two points nailed down, um, and really think about your product, um, and then launch on Amazon, don't go headlong into it, basically, because you know, and, and that that was so product first, op- opportunity then product first. Make mistakes on paper is my advice. Love um, that great advice, great advice, yeah. and then. <laughs> The last question for you here. What is your prediction for what we will see in the next 12 months in e-commerce? Well, um, AI, um, I think the, the the search on um, Amazon and other marketplaces is going to get more intuitive about what your mood is, 
how are you feeling? Um, those types of things, you know, uh, uh, be able to pick up on that. Um, so, I mean, the, I don't think AI and the data that the likes of Amazon have and or Tesco or Walmart have, both for that matter, can really understand how, what's your mindset? So, but, you know, I guess an obvious one would be um, if you're pregnant, uh, as a, as a woman, uh, you know, being able to understand like your mindset, or, or you're thinking about getting pregnant, or perhaps you're thinking about, um, uh, you know, growing a family, or those kind of feelings. The the, the 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 AI will be able to pick up on those mindsets, so your buy your buying pattern will suddenly change. You you'll start buying different types of products, and then okay, right, okay, well, this is your mindset now. Um, now because of, because you're thinking that way, you're moving house, you're having these similar moments that. AI will be able to predict that and suggest products accordingly. So I think that's an, an area of note that we go through. There's loyalty card data there in like Walmart and Tesco's. Mm. There's Alexa data with Amazon. There's app data. There's Twitch. Data. It be able to pull it together. And I think the real we've talked about AI replacing lots of people's jobs, but I think where it's got the most potential is being able to really deep to 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 De delve into these massive data sets that these these um, e-commerce companies have and make sense of it all really, really quickly, which a human being can't do. Right. Um, and I, I'm, I'm based in Cambridge, UK, so it's like one of the hubs of the world, worldwide expertise. So that's what the guys are talking about, like Cambridge Analytica, analyzing massive data sets, looking at, you know, the, being able to solve, co um, uh, you know, uh, medicine to, to cure people with COVID and all that sort of good stuff, you know, so that's, but that, that kind of thought process could be, be brought into the world of marketplace. And I think that's, you know, you've seen that uh, Amazon started to tinkle with it, with AI and the search with Rufus. Yeah. I think that's going to be developing even more and more. I, I think, be, I think you're probably wrong. right. <laughs> I, I, I might be wrong. <laughs> I, I think I think you're very spot on. So we'll just have to take a look at everything in a year and chat again. But Matt, thank you so much for being on with me today. Really, really appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem at all. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate that. Of course. And Bye. friendly reminder for everyone, if you're interested in learning more about Optimizen, you can check out their website at optimizen.co.uk, or you can reach out to Matt and his team directly at hello at optimizen.co.uk. Matt, thank you again for hopping on. And thank you so much for everyone who tuned into today's episode. If you liked what you heard, please be sure to give us a thumbs up, share your thoughts with us in the comments, subscribe to the show, and we will see you all on the next one.